taking on the task of building an engine in a tiny little carport is like way more work than I wanted to do. Could I build the rebuild that engine? Probably, but in the time frame I wanted to do this car in and the space I have, that would have been a terrible idea. So next best option was to buy a new one for it. I put out a post on my Instagram, seeing if anybody knew of a engine or short blocks or anybody that does like rebuilds or parts out in the LA area and seeing if any of them could find me a small block Ford. And I got a hit back from a good friend um, who's in the Mustang community. And he gave me a recommendation going with this place called Stangs RS out of uh, Burbank. I gave the guy a call. He had just gotten in a 92 Mustang GT uh, that was all wrecked up in the rear end. He was parting it out basically. He sent me a video of it running and immediately I knew that like that was my engine. Like I needed, like it, it's literally running, it's there. I've seen it running because a lot of the engines you're going to buy on like Facebook and Craigslist aren't going to be like known running engines. You just know that's like the risk you take. You know what I mean? Luckily, my dad had a week off. Dad flew out here, stayed out here for a week and helped me put the engine in the car. We went and got a lift. We went and got a stand. We went and got all the things I needed to do it. Um, rented a truck, went and got the new engine um, and got to work. When we started doing all the work to pull the engine out of the car, we decided to drain the oil. <laughs> we, he said there was a little bit of coolant in the oil, but like there was a lot of coolant in the oil. Like it came out in clumps. I've never seen anything like this. It was terrible. Like it was really, really bad. Oh no, that's not good. That's not how oil is supposed to look. That's freaking milk. Are you videoing? He put clean oil. Oh shit. Yo, a chunk just came out. So we started to lift up the car, uh, got the front ups on boards and so on and so forth and got the engine stand over the car, we took the hood off, did all the things we needed to do to get it out. And we knocked out getting everything ready to pull the engine out in that one day. We loosed all the bell housing bolts. We took the torque converter bolts off. We, all the wires, all the lines, all the stuff we needed to get it off. And we started pulling the engine out. Uh, sadly, my carport, as the engine crane comes up, it kept hitting the top of the valance of the carport. So we have to like bring it up go back a little bit, bring it down, bring it back, bring it down, get back, bring it down, get back. And as we started pulling it back, we realized that we were not going to get it off easily. So we had to pull off the flex plate off and bring it, we were able to get it like farther forward, farther forward. And then we had to take the grill off. Uh, so we have the engine hanging over the balance and like with the right over the top we were working and we had to pull the whole grill off the car because we figured if we pulled the grill off, we could actually like slip it in the space where the grill was, which made our lives a thousand times easier. And we got it out. She's out. Once we pulled the pan off, we found a few fun things. We found that we found a rod bearing basically just laying in the bottom there. So that kind of confirmed the whole case of the engine being destroyed. Not that it wasn't already, but like it really confirmed it. And everything was just nasty. Like it was gummed up and it was just wasn't good looking. So we pulled the old engine off. Once we got that engine on the dolly, the new one, pulled the pan off of it because it was a rear sump and not a front sump. Once we pulled all that off, we cleaned off all the surfaces. Razor blade every single surface, made it all nice and pretty and started getting work putting it back together. Once we got the pan on, we started to get the work on the intake manifold, pulled all the parts off the top of it because I had an EFI system on the top for the 92 Mustang. So that all had to go. As I pull the intake manifold off um, and start to put the new one on, we realized that we can't do that because to get the engine in the car, we had, the new, we had to get a new way to put it in. The way that it came out was not gonna way it was gonna go back in. Um, with, the, with the top balance on my carport, it just wasn't gonna happen that way. Our solution was to make the chains really short for the en engine lift. And we attached them to the intake manifold bolts instead of the exhaust bolts. And we basically just made it as short as we could so we'd have as much area to lift and put in. We actually extended out our arm on our lift a little bit and drilled new holes for the bolts so we could actually get more further out leverage for the really long hood on this car. And it went way smoother going in than it did coming out. The hardest part about it was actually getting the torque converter bolts to line up. We got, I got the torque converter bolts on by using my cell phone to actually, as like a mirror with a camera, to look in and actually see where it was. and kept spinning the engine around so we got them in place. Then we ran them all in, red Loctite, the whole shebang, and got it all together. The newer Mustangs had electronic fuel pumps, not mechanical ones. So we had to purchase an electronic fuel pump and I bolted it underneath the car and got it all by the fuel tank and all set up with lines and wired it all up and everything like that. We realized that we weren't gonna need a power steering pump on the car. So we had to get rid of that. We had to get rid of um, the vacuum pump 
for our situation, we found that it was probably the best to keep it so that our belt would actually fit. We could basically go buy a, a normal size belt at the auto parts store to fit on the car. We got to the point of putting the uh, actual like headers on the car and that was a pain in the ass. I don't know why, but headers should be headers. They sh bolts should be bolts. They should all go in the same place. Shouldn't matter what car it is or what engine series it's from. They should all fit. They didn't, it just took forever. I felt like we stretched metal. Like there was a point in time where we considered pulling out the blowtorch and like stretching the header out a little bit because it was that bad. So on the third day, we finally got everything all buttoned up and all ready to go and it was time to start the car. Made sure the star was connected, made sure everything's wired up. The ignition cranked it over a few times. It started. Good. Cutting it? Um, it was really rough. I ran it for about two seconds and we stopped it. We need to get the timing light out. We forgot the timing light out, so. Hit the button again, started the car. My dad was uh, out there timing the car. We got around that 10 degree point that, you know, most small block Fords and Mustangs and so on and so forth should be at. Really low, like it was wop, bop, 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 bop. Like it was really, really like slow revving. And we kind of just think there's a cam in the car. Once it was timed, we stopped the engine, got everything hooked up. One of the few things we noticed when the engine was running was we were getting no, no voltage. Alternator just wasn't working. We don't know why, can't figure it out. So we just decided that it needs a new alternator. It was a newer alternator with EFI stuff all on it too. So we just decided to get like a really easy to wire, one wire alternator from JEGS or from wherever just to make our life easier. During its running time, that first couple times, we noticed we were smelling a lot of exhaust and we ended up finding out that on newer Mustangs on the heads, there's like an emissions port on the back and we didn't know about this. We should have done this outside the car when the engine was not in the car. Yep, smoking. Yep, that's a first start smoke up. Time it lights in the bag. In the smoking back. for a while. What's, uh, what's over there? I have no idea. It's coming from the back somewhere. It's a little longer than it should. Am I touching it? Oh, wait a minute. We got a... Uh... We got a port there, an exhaust port that's open. We got an exhaust port that's open. It's a freaking, this head, this head have EGR on it. Oh shit, it's a Fox body. Yeah, we have to put a block off plate over that. But there's two little ports back there and they put exhaust right out the back of the heads, just into the abyss. We found out that it was the same exact size as a spark plug. Took a hammer, knocked the ends of the spark plugs off, and screwed them on to the back of the head and got them as tight as I can get them with a wrench, just so they're there and they're blocking off that. My next job was getting it to Ben's house. It ran, but it didn't drive. Um, when we first got it running, one of the things we checked was the transmission. Put it in drive, and it didn't do anything. It just didn't move. I don't know about transmissions other than manual ones, and I didn't know what to do. My dad literally just told me, he's like, it's fluid. Just gotta put some fluid in it. That's all it is. It's just transmission. It's easy peasy. I was worried it was broken because obviously with the car, it didn't move at all. It didn't even try to go anywhere. It just sat there. So we poured a quart of transmission fluid in the car, started it up. We saw some transmission fluid on the, on the stick and it didn't go on drive. We're like, shit. Then we decided to put another half of a quart I think I had laying around in the car, put it into drive and it just inched forward. Yo! So excited. Like, I mean, that's like magic. Like you just pour some fluid in something and it just starts to work. Dude, that's a guess, I guess that's how it works. Next day rolls around, I get in the car, I start to drive it out, I get all ready for it. It's like the big day, I get to drive the car for the first time, like it hasn't, I haven't driven it yet. I barely sat in the driver's seat. Start it up, go to leave my driveway, and as I get to the end of the driveway, it like doesn't want to go very well. Like it got to the end of the, like my little driveway area, didn't want to go very much further. And the transmission just felt like it didn't have power. Like it had nothing there to keep it going. So I decided that I had another quarter transmission fluid and I decided to just pour the whole thing in there. Put the car in neutral, checked it, made sure it was good. It looked like it was up to full now and got it on the road. And as soon as it got out of the road, 
I was super, super excited and it just ran like shit. It was shaking and it felt like doing this. Like it, the whole thing is shaking. It was like the worst ride ever. Like it was terrible. Like I'm just driving this car that's just shaking and bucking and hating its life. It idles just fine. As soon as I got to a stoplight, it would sit there and just peacefully just be idling, just doing its thing, sitting there sounding like a stock car. As soon as you get on the throttle, it just ba 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 ba. If you give it any gas, it just dies. doesn't go anywhere. It just <laughs> doesn't do anything. I didn't even look at the gauges. I truly didn't even know that the speedometer was working until I got to Ben's house. I was just so laser focused on like the road and like not the car not shooting smoke out of the hood. I got it here. We noticed that there's kind of coolant everywhere and there's a little bit of smoke coming out the hood and there's a little like, you know, a little white smoke or blue smoke coming out the tailpipe. It got here though, and we parked it in the spot, and it made it, and that's huge. It drove like three miles, five miles, like that's it, but it drove. There's a tie rod that's all fucked up probably. It's shaking like crazy. It has a terrible alignment. Who knows what else is wrong with the car? Brakes are good. That's a plus. The brakes are good, and also it looks like we're probably getting a big leak out of the water pump from the coolant. It's just like dripping out of the actual bottom of the water pump. There is tons of stuff wrong with the car, but... Now that it's here and it drove for the first time, now it's just time to, you know, fix all the rest of it. Hey!